Hey, what's up, aviation fans? Dave here, speaking to you live from my new studio, uh, <laughs> namely my backyard. Uh, it's really nice today, not that, that humid, so I thought I would come out here and just sort of uh, pre-frame what I'm about to uh, start with this next set of lifestyle, I call them lifestyle, aviation lifestyle videos. Um, now, the great thing about being in the situation I am right now um, is that, you know, I have a little bit of free time, and uh, that means that I'm the kind of guy that can't stay in one place and, and just do nothing. My golf game is not that good. It's not good enough for me to go every single day out to the course, so I've always got to find something to do to keep me busy. So in my case, uh, I've elected uh, to sort of move toward the market in real estate, my through the businesses, I was able to acquire a number of commercial facilities. And these facilities allowed me to actually move some of uh, profitability, some of my cash into real estate. And the cool thing about that is, you know, and this is just my vision. I mean, none of, none of this, uh, do not take any of these videos as direct recommendations. I do not hold a, a finance license or anything like that. So this is my opinion strictly. My name is David Carrier. In 2007, I founded a commercial plumbing pump systems business in Florida. In 2015, after traveling the world commercially for over 25 years, I responded to a discovery flight coupon on the internet and was bitten by the aviation bug in 2015. From that point forward, all I ever wanted to do was travel from the front seat, not looking out the side window in the back. I decided if I was able, I'd travel the Southeast on my own as a private pilot. Together with Vernon Van Cleve, my trusty CFI and sidekick, who's been with me since the beginning, we've been traveling the country looking for a suitable aircraft for my mission. I've since purchased three planes and in 2021 was finally able to get my dream plane, a 2021 Cirrus SR-22. This is me and Vern's continuing flight log and aviation story. Hope you enjoy it. Um, my feeling is if I'm gonna own something, I want it to be tangible. I want it to have value. And that's why I have been investing in, as a result of the business growing in these real estate uh, buildings and these commercial buildings. And the fact is that at, when I went to to move from and, and increase the business size and move from a smaller building to a larger building. It just so happens that I put the building on the market. I did not get what I really wanted to get out of the building. It was almost by accident that I ended up keeping these uh, pieces of property. And it's actually a good thing that I did because here's what I love about real estate. If you go online, you can hear a lot about this through other uh, channels that, that sort of uh, profess the idea of owning and renting property. The great thing about real estate is, for me, is that number one, I have the value of tangible property. I can touch it, I can feel it. I could taste it if I want, but I'm not gonna do that. That's number one. It's, it's something that I can see, touch, taste, feel. It's tangible. Number two, for the most part, it appreciates over time. Now, I'm not saying, you know, look at the current market as an example of appreciating uh, property because I, quite honestly, I have a feeling things are starting to drop as the housing market goes, so goes everything else because it's sort of a, it's, it's tied to personal income. It's tied to discretionary income on the part of humans, individuals. If they have discretionary income, they're going to invest, they're going to buy, they're going to, they're, they're going to purchase things. But over time, generally speaking, as long as you hold on to it long enough, property appreciates. So that's one way of storing value. Think about this. Think about three years ago, two years ago, you take $100,000 and you put it in a bank account and you take $100,000 and you put it on a down payment on a building. I'll give you a great example. I, I bought a condo in Daytona. That condo in the last one year increased by about 25%. So instead of $100,000, which I invested, that 100,000 is now worth $125,000. Conversely, if I left that 100,000 in a savings account, 
the rate of, of power of that dollar has decreased by about 10%. So instead of having 100000 in that bank account, I now have 90000 in that bank account. So that tangible property is already worth 20 to 25% more than if I would have kept that in dollars. Okay, quick overview at what I believe is the way to build long-term uh, wealth. It's real simple. The way I did it is to start a business. So I started a business 15 years ago and I've been fortunate enough to be committed to being the best we can be. Our product is by far the best product in the marketplace and commercial plumbing space. And uh, we focused really on the tech portion of it where old companies did not. They sort of focused on the, the hardware whereas we focused on the tech. So that's number one. Um, in, in my particular case, I, I was fortunate enough that uh, we made an impact on North America and that attracted uh, larger companies in that came in and, and purchased mine. However, there are other ways to do this. I mean, again, my, my daughter is right now developing and doing uh, single family real estate rentals. So she's, she's actually acquired several pieces of property. She's actually sold a property uh, and made, made, an, made a, a, a pretty good profit from that sale. So there's, there's other ways you can do this. I would say the fastest way to do it, it's gonna be a little bit more difficult now because of the interest rates, but the fastest way to do it is to buy and cash flow real estate rentals. If you have the time to do that, if you do it right, there's a lot of great videos out there. Uh, one that comes to mind is the Big Pockets guy. Um, if you just do the research on YouTube, you'll find lots of cool stuff on there. And, and again, this is the great thing about YouTube, that you can find anything you want on YouTube. That's one way to learn about it. I believe big picture, thinking big picture, you cannot become wealthy by watching meme stocks and following the herd. You are gonna get burned. It's like walking into a casino and throwing your money away. That's not the way to do it. That's why I say big picture assets. Invest in assets. If, that's a, if those assets cash flow, that is gonna earn you an income. And therefore, you can take that income, save it up, and buy more assets. If there's some area you're particularly good at, maybe you've discovered something that is a low investment cost and high return, go for it. Uh, now's the time to do that. Um, the real estate market is getting tougher and I'll tell you why. Because the interest rates are climbing. And so as those interest rates climb, a lot of these people that are investing in real estate, they're doing these interest only loans. So as the interest rates climb, their payment climbs per month. A lot of people don't realize that interest rates and a climbing interest rate will affect everybody, which is why the Fed does it. They're trying to cool the economy down, trying to bring down uh, crazy money, right? Inflation going through the roof. Um, and there is a side effect to that. So just be, be aware and be prepared for that. So whatever it is you do, just do it well and you will be rewarded. That's the way I think about it. It was a really, really tough go at it early on when I started this company. There were days when I didn't take payroll, but you just gotta power through, focus on the vision. Uh, and my favorite, I guess, quote, comes from a guy by the name of Steve Jobs. And I actually, I actually printed one of these quotes and I hung it up in my building. And the quote is, the journey is the destination. And it really is because you learn so much on the journey. As you're going through these journeys, you're learning or you do something wrong, you learn about it very quickly. If you do something right, you learn about it very quickly. But enjoy the journey. Be, you know, you always have to be positive. Keep being positive. Focus on what you want and go for it. So that's my sort of contribution to big picture. This is what we're going to talk about. What things you can do to improve your life. Having been to the top of the mountain, uh, I hopefully I can provide you some input on that. I'm also the current chair of a Florida organization called Grow FL. 
And Grow FL, and the mission of Grow FL is to develop small business and help them grow and give them the tools, resources, and more importantly, my favorite part of it, peer-to-peer -peer networking, talking to people who have been there and know the way. Why would you go through a thick jungle with a machete not knowing what's behind the next tree? Follow behind the trailblazers that have done it. They will show you the way. That's what I love about Grow FL. Hopefully you can uh, give us a like online. We're on LinkedIn and we do have a website, especially if you're within Florida, because this is a Florida organization. But if you're not within Florida, there are other ways for you to find this kind of help. Most of your economic development councils in all the states, in all, in many countries are there with free assistance to help you develop and grow your idea. I do have a broker who manages my other funds. Those funds are predominantly in the market. Those are long-term plays. I do not expect to go into the market and throw you know, several hundred thousand dollars on the table like I'm going to Vegas in the roulette wheel. That's not the idea. The idea is, again, playing the averages. Over time, the market has continued to increase. So uh, that is, is a positive thing for, for everybody, for the market and for your portfolio. So that is something that's going to be long term. It's sort of a ballast. It's, a, it's better than being in cash. Let's put it that way. The market as volatile as it is, if you're in for the long term, it's far better than cash because cash hasn't had a very good run when it comes to buying power, particularly over the last uh, several years. Now, if you're going on vacation like I'm about to do, uh, and this is sort of the kickoff to the new uh, video structure. If you go to Europe, for example, which is where we're going, in three days, uh, my dollars in Europe are actually more powerful against the euro so I can actually get more in Europe for the same dollar to euro conversion. So right now <laughs> is actually a good time to go vacationing in Europe. I'm gonna turn the fan on. It's just getting too doggone hot, hold on. This is sort of the, the idea of what I'm gonna be talking about going forward. The vacation videos are, are nothing more than that. They're to sort of bring you in and see what, uh, what I'm doing. You know, you can kind of see whether or not cruise is right for you. Uh, maybe those that are cruising or cruisers might get something out of it. And those of you that just wanna see really cool places like, I don't know, Montenegro and Croatia and Mykonos and Santorini and Italy, because we're gonna go back to Venice. It's my second time to Venice. Beautiful, beautiful city. Enjoy it while you can, especially now while your dollars are more powerful. So that's kind of the idea here. And, you know, all of this activity, all of my uh, financial activity, if you will, all of my ideas, these are things that I'm using to fund my airplane and my travel and et cetera. Because again, I mean, if you look at the cost of, of owning a plane versus the usage you can get out of it, I mean, unless you're flying that, like literally every single day for business, it's probably a losing proposition. You're probably not gonna, you're certainly not gonna make any money. It's gonna be gonna cost you. But at the very same time, you know, it, it is very useful. It maximizes my time. So instead of sitting in my car for three and a half hours to drive to Miami to deliver a message face to face, I can do it in the plane in about, in less than an hour. Wheels up to wheels down, I can be in Miami in, in the new plane, sometimes 48 minutes if the, if the winds are right, 45 minutes. Uh, so that is time well spent on the ground in front of clients. So that's exactly how I'm gonna use the plane as I move forward in my um, consulting business. So here's where the homework comes in. First of all, do me a favor. If you're liking where I'm going with this, and, and by the way, if, I'm, if you're liking where I'm going with this, and you are a new viewer to the channel, I would like you to do me the favor, like the video, and more importantly, subscribe, because I'm gonna kind of mix in a little bit of aviation and a little bit of finance. And um, for those of you that wanna see aviation, it'll be very clear 
that, you know, this is an aviation video, this is a finance video, and you'll be able to pick and choose. So I don't take any offense to that. I understand some of you, all you want to see is cockpit videos, and that's great. And I intend to add a lot more of those to the channel because what I'd like to do is just kind of get in the cockpit, talk about the avionics, because that's been the biggest struggle for me. I don't know how many of you are out there doing your IFR work, but my biggest struggle for the IFR, you know, program or procedure and, and preparation is understanding the new technology of Garmin, Avidine, all these different electronic devices in airplanes. And let's face it, steam gauges are going away. Uh, if you look over on Aviation 101, uh, Josh Flowers just got finished upgrading his entire avionics suite to that uh, to a whole new Garmin deck, Garmin flight deck for the most part. Down there in Australia, you got Stefan Drury going to the Garmin dual screen to replace the old Avidine screens. So if you think that uh, electronic uh, cockpits are going away, think again. They're going to become the norm. Steam gauges are going uh, by way of the dinosaur, and uh, that has been the toughest part for me. Understanding these incredibly valuable tools, but just the setup, the buttonology. You've heard me and Vern, uh, well, more so me, going, what the heck does that button mean? What, what are we doing here? What's going on? So that's really been the struggle, is the buttonology portion. So. If you would do me a favor, if you are new to this channel and you just kind of, it just kind of showed up on your feed, do me a favor. If you like what you see, give me a subscribe, give me a like, and a thumbs up. And um, that would that would be very appreciative. I would appreciate it. The Google algorithm appreciates it. And I appreciate you guys watching today. Keep watching. I got more exciting stuff coming, but I wanted to give you another, just sort of a setup into my ideas right now. And I'll get a little bit more deeper into um, the vacation side here in the next couple of days. It may take me a little while to post that stuff, so bear with me. I'm going to be gone for 10 days, and then I'm going to be coming back. And it'll take me some time to, you know, break down all the different cameras and videos. I'm only going to bring two cameras with me. I'm going to bring this little DJI Osmo. I don't know if you can see it over here on this camera. A little tiny thing here. It is pocket size, it's really easy to carry around, and more importantly, it shoots in 4K. Um, these are the same people that make the, the uh, drones, and it's sort of the same technologies that you see on the drone with the gimbal, and it keeps it steady. So uh, I'm gonna bring this, and I'm gonna bring my iPhone. And with these two cameras, I'm gonna hopefully give you a cool insight into what it's like to travel the Mediterranean, to see the views, to catch the sounds, to sort of take in that panorama that is the Southern Mediterranean. I've been looking forward to this for a long time, excited, and I'm real excited to have you join me on this journey. Thanks again for watching. Keep up with the channel, subscribe and like, and have yourself a great day, and more aviation videos are coming.